Hi Terry, here's how you do more than one line of lettering and, and control the sewing. Okay, so I, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, make it like two lines like this. So there's my first line, there's my second line. Um, you can do this right here. I try to control things a little bit by color. It just makes it a little bit quicker and easier and I can always remove the color stop. So I've made my lines of lettering, I selected the second one, and I'm going to come in here and just you know, change it real quick to another color. So this is what I have now. So I'm going to say OK, and let's go ahead and generate. And I guess it changed them all. So let me come up here and select these. I just right clicked and dragged around here, and we'll just change that color. All right, so there is my more than one line of lettering, and I want to control things. Well, this is on its own line. That's on its own line, and I have a lot of control here. I can edit each individual line. And, you know, I can select them with a left click and drag around here, and I can use my centering tools. So, now your question was, how do you control the stitching? Well, if you can make these two lines of color, then it's a little bit easier to control things. What we're going to do here is we want this one to stitch from here to here, and then you want to come back and stitch over here. So, I'm going to come over to my color chips over here, you know, up on the... Um, left hand side and I'm going to left click on that first line of lettering's color chip and if you look at your stitch sequence viewer you have this eye so I'm going to just click on that eye and it'll hide those letters now if you're in 3D view you will still see those letters but you won't be able to do anything with them okay so as long as you know that you know they're hidden let me kind of go back and do that again you know watch my mouse I'm just going to come up and click on the blue color chip here that represents that first line that selects everything that's in that color chip and I'm gonna come right over here to the eye and click on the eye and I'm gonna hide that line of lettering that means that it's still in the design but my program won't let me do anything with that I can't edit it I can't move it I can't change the stitching order and that's the important part so now I'm gonna go up to accessories and I'm going to say um, set my stitching order. I could optimize the stitching order and we'll look at that next but let's do set stitching order. So with my blue hidden nothing will change there. It's not going to move into position or the stitching order but I can come over here and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and you can see they're all highlighted over there and then just press enter. Now if you have an I with a dot on top of it don't forget that the dot is also an area that you have to select. So there's my st um, stitching order. This is now changed. You can see it in the stitch sequence. That's going to stitch, you know, first. But now I need to get to these blue letters, right? So right click off to the side and just click on that blue color chip. And if you don't get anything with one click, double click to select them all. And then just go back up and remove the X over top of the I. So now I've got more than one line and there's my lettering, right? Now I want to make this all the same color. So in between the blue N and that E from here, I just click on this little rainbow and remove the color stop. So now what's going to happen is this line will stitch and it'll come down to here. The last thing I need to do is just make sure I right click off the side and nothing is selected and regenerate that lettering. Now my lines of letters are still going to behave like their lines of letters. All I did was change the stitching order, so if I wanted to come in here and left click and drag around these, I could still center them, you know, I can still space these. And I still have total control of the lettering. All I did was tell it to sew in a different order, and here's what it's going to look like. You can see I've got that going in one direction, and then it's coming back down to the E. And there you go.